What's up guys, Omni here. You guys know how it goes, another day, another video. Last night I tweeted I sleep. What recent news, topics, tweets, videos you want me to talk about tomorrow? A very popular family vlogger by the name of Ruby Frankie got arrested for the suspicion of abusing her kids. There seems to be a bit of drama when it comes to the Creators League, as popular streamer C Dog VA announces that he will no longer be participating. A YouTuber by the name of Vince Vintage is apparently being stalked and YouTube is doing nothing about it. Dr. Disrespect seems to have got himself caught up in the whole Starfield pronouns drama. And apparently the legendary Smooth McGroove may be returning to YouTube. All of that and more. So yeah, you guys know the drill. Sit back, relax, put your feet up, and yeah, allow me to lay it on you. But before we get into some of the big chungy wongies of the day, I present to you the biggest of chungies of wongies. Uh, PlayStation UK said, treat yourself to 19 inches of venom and more with the Marvel Spider-Man 2 Collector's Edition pre-order here. The internet is going absolutely crazy. PlayStation UK, what have you done? As you can see here, guys, the, the quotes are going absolutely bonkers. I'm in here being like, bro, Spawn Wave saying, yo, what's going on over here? You mean the figurine, right? <laughs> Everybody in the replies and the quote retreats basically saying, huh, what do you mean by that? <laughs> PlayStation UK, you knew exactly what you were doing, you freaking horny sons of bitches. So guys, we have some sad news here. Orange Flame said, The Icon, former singer from Smash Mouth, died today. Rest in peace, the legend Steve Harwell. And that's right, guys. Yesterday, Smash Mouth Steve Harwell has sadly passed away at the age of 56. From what I believe was a uh, liver failure. For those of you guys who still don't know who Steve Harwell is, he's most famously known for the somebody was told me the world was gonna roll me and that whole uh song when it came and related to shrek that you know the shrek movie is just a cult classic on the internet and that song itself is attached to it to be completely frank and honest i wasn't very familiar with a lot of smash mouth song but i do know the freaking impact of that song all star all that glitters is gold only shooting star breaks the mo. Oh, this guy was absolutely, you know, beyond his time. And um, it was really sad. We were hearing about potential health conditions that were occurring with the band Smash Mouth a while back. And it seems like this is what the turn has eventually came to. So rest in peace to the legend, to the homie Steve Harwell. 56, way too young, but, you know, just thankful again from the impact that he left before he was gone. So we got some good news here. So, you know, TMH said, what's up, Omni? Can you please talk about the return of the acapella legend Smooth McGroove on YouTube? Also a huge fan, by the way. Thank you so much, homie. There's no way that my guy, the man, the myth, the legendary Smooth McGroove, okay? If you've been on the internet long enough, you have probably heard this man and his acapellas where he sings with himself and eight other different versions and he sings video game music. Ba, 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 da, ba, ba, da, ba. Ba, da, da, ba. You know the stuff that we do when we're like at home, like singing the music? Well, he just decided to get eight versions of himself, Kagino Bushin, and then <laughs> made it into a full out, just beautiful songs. I, he took a break a long time ago, and then I remember he came back, and then I'm curious if he took another break, but I did see a recommended video floating around that said like, hey, I, I may be back. Let's let's go check it out really fast. What's been going on? Guys, listen, this this guy is an, he's he's like me. He's a, he's a fur dad. You know, I'm a fur dad. He's got his boy. I got my boy. He's sleeping somewhere else. But like he is <laughs> one of the people who actually like created the most original content on this platform and revolutionized it in the early days. Like this guy is so important when it comes to the YouTube culture. What's up, everybody? I know it's been a while, but I, I thought I'd stop on here and uh do an update video and just bye. let you guys know that a, a new season of Smooth McGrew videos is on the way. Oh, it is snap. fully planned, and um, I'm excited to get back into it. It's been a while since I've uh, recorded any music, much less released. It's so hard to just pay attention to what he's saying because this Mega Man, like that was one of. <laughs> I'm jamming to the music because I've heard his songs over and over again. So it's hard paying attention to you, dog. I'm glad you're back, but you should not have played this song. And he here. And um, for those of you who are interested in being involved I have. or supporting the channel, you can head to patreon.com slash smooth McGroove. Okay. And um, we'll be doing some discussions there. Uh, stronger supporters are going to get my videos a day early. Nice. Along with uh, a Patreon-only Discord channel where I'll be answering questions and chatting with you guys daily and uh strongest supporters 
as always, we're going to be doing monthly video chats, nice. which is always a good time. Nice. But uh, but yeah, I'm just stoked to get back into it. I've been going through my my list of uh, of songs from old games and some newer games that I put on hold, and uh, I'm stoked to get back into it. I've already got some recording done, and um, I'm thinking in the next week or two. I should have a video fully edited and ready to post. What? So it's happening. Like, this guys, this is <laughs> legendary, man. This guy is just one of the most, like, powerful, uh, successful, early, like, video game music creators. And he, he, he paved the way for a lot more people to come through. So it's so good to see this man come back. I can't wait to see what old songs he comes back with. Some of the, the new games he comes back with. Like, like I'm, I'm telling you, if you guys aren't hip to Smooth McGrew, I'm hyping him up for a reason, okay? He will not let you down. <laughs> I appreciate you guys supporting and, you know, sticking around, watching my videos, um, even when I'm not around here. Um, but, yeah, I'll be active, and uh, I'll be catching you guys soon. That's, guys, this is, this is, we need, we need Smooth McGroove, okay? And the world that's doomed and gloomed, the world needs smooth, more Smooth McGrooves, okay? <laughs> All this man does exert is just good energy and good sounds and good beats to make you feel better, right? Like, no drama, no nothing. Just, it's, he's, he's good energy, guys, okay? So if you guys want to come support the homie and the gang gang, okay? His channel is just Smooth McGroove. He's got his Patreon up here as well. There's 4,000 comments. Everyone's hyped to see the return of this king, man. I super am as well, man. I hope he travels, and I just hope he just continues to succeed and be successful, man. This is this is one of the goats, okay? And I'm just paying homage because, you know, real recognized freaking real, man. And this man is extremely familiar. So Zeron and a lot of you guys wanted me to talk about this said Sea Dog VA and the Creators League. For what I understand, there seems to be some issues going on with this new initiative called the Creators League. I believe it has like eight different creators from uh, different facets of the influencer world where they get together and they do a sweepstakes where they tell you, you guys, to join their teams to participate in a contest where you can win like lots of money. We'll watch the video really fast. It's like a minute long where they kind of just introduce everything but it looks like sea dog va pulled out from the creators league because of uh, controversy when it comes to nfts and blockchains apparently that kind of technology exists when it comes to this and he has been informed that uh, well he was not informed that the nfts and blockchains would be a part of this entire program which means now they're down one person and also some people are thinking it's a bit controversial because it includes certain people where they're just like eh, it's a little bit sus. Yo, listen, we need you on our team for the Creator League. It's a brand new league where the community, you, hold the power. And, uh... No, no, no. Join my team. Our communities are going to draft the players for our team, so hold that's on. why I need you. Wait, hold on. My food's here. Passes are live now at creatorleague.gg. Make sure you buy my pass. No shot. The green wall is going <laughs> to... Oh, uh, I, I I like Bella Porsche giving the like the stank eye over to the scum. It, basically, every creator is reading like you know ten seconds of a script and then pretending they're getting interrupted, and it's uh, it's corny as hell. <laughs> like I feel like I know whatever this sweepstake is, everyone who's a part of it is getting paid big buco duco dollars. I, I feel like y'all can come up with a better non cornier video than that. Y'all got the funds, man. This is y'all got to try harder, dog. I'm show all y'all how it's done. <laughs> There's a fifty thousand dollar open qualifier that allows you to earn a spot on your creator's team and play on their stream as well. Plus, if you do make it to the league, you'll battle it out There's at the main event to win your portion of $200,000. So if you like money, you're gonna want my pass because we are gonna absolutely destroy these nerds. Nah, look, look, look. Having a pass gets you access to an exclusive Discord. So yeah, join please. Why is Vinny... <laughs> This man, Vinny, here on the top left has not made eye contact with the camera. He's just literally reading from the script. You're supposed to be like, hey, hey, guys, you at home participating. Come join my team. Like, literally, this man's just like, nah, nah, mm -mm, just mm -mm. <laughs> y'all need to put in some more effort, man. They are making way too much money for this to be so low budget and low effort. Man, Come on, bro. You already know you're actually no going to go. The first game's my team is the one you want to be on. You clearly want to be on my team. Yeah, you know you want to be on my team. I'm gonna have you, baby. You know what I mean? If you join me, you're gonna be on my team. You just got speed in the bottom right. Like, 
I'm, I'm trying to figure out who the audience is, right? The target audience. Like, does anybody like look at this, right? You're admitted in and you're watching this and you're like, yeah, I want to join. Like, I'm, hey, and if that's you watching at home, that's fine. I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm joking around because I like poking fun at things, but I don't feel like this really gives me any kind of initiative to, to I don't know. I feel like someone's trying to take my money. <laughs> feel like I'm getting got. I could be wrong, but it might be legit, but we'll see. We got Vinny, Optic, Clicks, Miskiff, Bellapur, Sapnap, Sea Dog, and I Show Speed. That's the, the eight people in the crew, and I think Mr. Beast is the one that's leading. Hey, Mr. Beast says, who you going with? Oh, by the way, do you want free Mr. Beast? So buy a pass before September 9th, get a free box of Feastables, Creator X League X Feastables. There seems to be a collaboration between the two. And if Mr. Beast is the one that's hosting it, then I feel a lot better with it because I don't think that Mr. Beast needs to get any to any like, you know, scummy behavior. He doesn't really need to. So I'm pretty sure he's not doing it. So I feel a lot better now that it's being, you know, and the people who are involved as well. There were some people in there that was involved that was a little sus. <laughs> But overall, it seems to have been vetted pretty well. Anyway, despite the like ridiculous like cast that they have there, like all of these people that they picked out have like crazy amounts of clout and audiences. It didn't really get that much likes, any quotes, so much activity. It, it 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 doesn't seem to be. I mean, from what I see here, at least on Twitter, not garnering that much attention. Maybe it's something that was going to grow, or maybe it's something that's being shown on like Mr. Beast's YouTube videos, and it's going to get viewership that way. But right now, it doesn't seem to be picking up much activity. Not a lot of people are excited to be a part of the Creators League and to join these people's teams from, you know, just this public opinion out here. Anyway, shortly after this announcement, Connor Dog, one of the people from the contest, said, yo, so I'll just be real with you guys. I accepted to join the Creator League, not fully understanding the tech behind it. Needless to say, with the current information available, I'm planning on withdrawing. I don't know if that means he is withdrawing or if he already has or if he's planning or if he hasn't canceled it, we'll find out. I don't think you said anything more since then. I was not told or made aware at any point that there was blockchain technology and was only made aware of that information when the event went live. I was given assurances that it had nothing to do with NFTs. Given my vocal hatred of such tech, I would never agree to join had I known that. So it sounds like that maybe Connor doesn't know the difference between the blockchain technology, which is actually very useful and resourceful and is being used and implemented across the entire world in ways that, you know, basically help the world. And then there's NFTs, non fungible tokens, which <laughs> that's the stuff. That's the scam where people came up with the bored apes and try to get you to purchase uh, specific blockchain uh, designated IP addresses assigned to images and then put value on that. That was the whole pump and dump scheme with the NFTs. Two different types of technology. NFTs do use blockchain technology, but blockchain is not NFTs. That's essentially what I'm saying. Anyway, he said, it's embarrassing enough up on my part to agree to promote this to my audience. I'm sorry, we'll talk about it more when I can. So what exactly is going on here? Does this thing actually use NFTs or is it just the blockchain? It's it's very important to know the difference. So Daxerto Knox, AKA Austin Knox, AKA a Hasanabi's uh, editor. He had posted and said, the Creator League account has begun hiding users, accusing the company of being a, quote, crypto sports gambling business model, end quote. At Bryson, narrator of the launch video confirms the digital passes are NFTs that will be minted on the at near protocol. So that's a confirmation at this project has to do specifically with NFTs. Here's an interesting tweet that I came across. It said, Mr. Beast is promoting NFTs. He's giving away a free box of Feasibles to anyone who buys a Creator League pass. And those passes are actually NFTs. But Creator League GG doesn't call the passes NFTs and they don't use any crypto related words in their marketing. Instead, they are just treating NFTs as backend technology. And that's what I think the future looks like. Companies integrating NFTs to their businesses and making the blockchain invisible to the end user. So that's also something that kinds of needs to be disclosed because people do not like the term NFTs. There's been so much scam surrounding the concept of NFTs over the past two to three years that people run as soon as they hear the word NFT, even if it was something that was being used functionally and not to scam people, most people don't want to be associated to the word. And in my opinion, if you're one of the people who are doing the creation of the leagues like this, people need to know that NFT technology is what is being used to push out this content. 
period, because it's obviously a stigma <laughs> when it comes to the, to the world itself. And there's quite literally no reason to be any of these eight people and get yourself involved in the whole NFT shuffle. OK, for those of you guys who don't know, by the way, like Bitcoin and Ethereum right now and the entire like crypto space is kind of like in a bearish market waiting for what appears to be might be a new bull run after the whole Bitcoin happening that's happening and the whole concept that's been happening with uh, the SEC approving Bitcoin ETFs. It looks like sometime, maybe even in early 2024, that, yeah, we might actually have uh, freaking ETFs and index funds that follow the Bitcoin market, which is absolutely huge because it's bringing more regulation into the crypto space. And people believe that this might create an extremely huge bull rush. So I see a lot of people right now in the creator in the financial space getting very hyped for what could be another crazy bull market in the crypto space. Who knows for sure it could go down the opposite way, but I think, in my opinion, from the research that I've been seeing, we're going to see a lot of news when it comes to cryptocurrency within the next five to six months. Whether it goes up or down, only time will tell. But yeah, that's what happened with the Creators League guys and GG and C Dog. I haven't seen him say anything else about it since then. Maybe he'll follow up later, uh, and I'll let you guys know if anything else comes up from this entire fiasco. And guys, we have an update to the Creators league situation actually occurred while i was editing this video for you guys 15 minutes ago okay you're not going to see me on camera because i just don't feel like being on camera but if you look at this post here by dexardo it says quote we apologize for not intentionally disclosing the blockchain's limited use within the league end quote efuse just laid off employees and postponed the launch of the creator league only three days after announcing it so yup somebody got in trouble another tweet that i found interesting was by dylan Liu, who said efuse didn't just have background blockchain tech they had an entire NFT marketplace with NFT products ready to launch so people could buy near tokens and get upsold on them after buying the passes. Then Fuse off ramps the tokens they were paid in. Don't understand what's being said at this point. All you really need to know is nine creators, some of the biggest ones on the platform, almost got duped by a company that was trying to hide their entire program and initiative behind the concept of selling NFTs, which might have been one of the biggest potential rug pulls in history. Okay, this this is huge. These guys almost got caught into a controversy that it could have been absolutely terrible for them if they later found it out that the way they were getting paid in comp it was through the process of use of silently using NFTs in the background. So Crescent said Stake getting their funds yoinked. Apparently the gambling site Stake was reportedly hacked with $41 million in crypto stolen. Dang, that's crazy. Anyway, so here's a quick follow up from yesterday's video. Remember we talked about the Starfield guy, the one that was kind of like spent like a two minute, three minute rant blowing up about the fact that there's pronouns in the game Starfield and then apparently a trans person pops up and he just was like, ah, lost his ever freaking mind and uh, yeah, made this huge rant that went viral. Well, apparently Dr. Disrespect kind of got swept into it as well um, and people have been dunking on him left and right when it comes to Starfield. The original tweet here said here, Dr. Disrespect was rejected a Starfield sponsorship deal due to his recent transphobia and he got triggered on stream because the head of Bethesda Publishing has pronouns in his bio. These guys wouldn't survive Modern Warfare 2 lobbies if pronouns trigger them. I, <laughs> I think that's one of the funniest things to me is like people who play Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 or Halo, like some of the most toxic, disgusting games of all time. If you ever get into the voice chats, the amount of blatant disrespect from like all forms and facets of life exists in the games that he plays, right? <laughs> <laughs> and this man swings over to come play Starfield and he's just like, ugh. He gads. <laughs> Why are you labeled as he and a him? Let me not jump to any conclusions. What what exactly did the doc do here? Him. Got it. Okay. Now everything's starting to make sense. Everything's starting to make sense now. Everything's starting to make sense. Got it, got it, got it. All right. I got it, got it. So I got to say this, Chance, we're just real quick. I, gotta, I just got to get it off my chest. Obviously, we've been hyping up Star Citizen for uh, 
Starfield. After a certain point of success, I feel like it's very easy not to just like cancel yourself. We all have these kind of like inner monologues, these thoughts, right? That even I do. Right? I got some thoughts sometimes where I know that if I say this out loud, that I'm getting banned. <laughs> so I re- I keep it I keep it contained. Okay, I, I'm not stupid, right? I don't feel like the doc is either, but I feel like you know certain people they they get so popular or they get so successful where they're just like screw it, you know, like mask off. Let me just say how I truly feel because it's not going to really hurt me in the long run because I've already beaten the game of life. And also, I feel like there's a certain type of audience too where, again, we've talked about it last time. You can pander and gain a lot of popularity by being a certain type of person, as you can see by the entire platform that is now known as Kick. There's a there's a rise of a group of kind of people who are just extremely toxic and you can make money and get more followers if you cater to. Anyway, I'm not saying that's what the doc is doing right now. I'm just saying like the doc does not have to jeopardize himself here, but it seems like he's actually making this choice willfully. I believe he's intelligent enough that he knows exactly what he's doing right now. For a long time. We've been making it very vocal, right, champ? Uh, Just say it, dog. We had our team reach out. Hey, can we work with you? Can we do something? Due to past controversies, there's no way we can work with uh, Dr. Disrespect. Dang, blackball, bro. How about just give me, like, let me play the game when it, when, when some of the others are playing it. How about that? Yeah, it's still, that's still, that's still the case. (laughs) Anyways, champ, we just had, we just had to get that off our chest. Okay, so he just wanted to make it publicly known in a minute and 35 seconds after a bunch of hesitation and stuttering that he did not gain access, uh, early access to Starfield because of previous remarks that he's made about transphobia. Okay, cool. This brings us back to Dr. Disrespect who tweeted and said, yo, some of these poor young people are just depressed. No life experience and completely misdirected by the internet. I, I agree with that. There, that that's, that's a fact. Look at my words being taken out of context here. Their insecurities are obvious. Politics should stay out of the video game industry entirely along with people like this. Dang. Okay. I mean, politics should stay out of the video game industry when... Oh, man. This argument here. If you guys don't know, Dr. Disrespect was in a fiasco a few months ago when it came to Nick Merckx and uh, people talking about canceling Nick Merckx over a video game and everyone was pulling out because they canceled Nick Merckx. Dr. Disrespect literally gets into the politics of the video game industry when it suits himself, when it's something that he agrees upon. And when it's something that is not, it's kind of like, uh, you should keep video game politics separately. It's it's one of those, uh, whatever one suits me the most is, is how it should fit. A lot of people were also saying like, are, are you kind of stupid? Like. <laughs> <laughs> the games you play are quite literally the most political in nature. Anyway, if that's some of the replies, Simon Toast Ken is down here. Hit up, champ. Don't get yourself down because they told you no. Sure, they made the right call based off this clip, but don't let that get to you. Keep on doing you, and maybe next time you'll get a game a few days early, champ. <laughs> and thanks for doing it for the depressed kids. Hero. Connor Eats Pen said, yo, you and your entire crew have been making fools of themselves lately by blowing these right wing dog whistles and project the blatant insecurity onto everyone else criticizing you. Maybe you're the problem. Someone else named Blastoy said, weren't you a dev? Shouldn't you think higher of the video game industry when it's bigger than the movie plus the music industry combined? Why should we have politics and those but not in video games? Should GTA not include political commentary? It's been effing weird watching you go from finger on the pulse gamer and character charismatic entertainer to an old, bitter, unfaithful political pawn with the self-awareness one can only expect from a filthy, rich narcissist. Dang. God dang. Wow. That's, that's, that's rough. Politics. Opera GX. Just stay out of the video game industry. And you got games like Bioshock and Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater and Detroit Become Human and Disco Elysium. And I already made this argument. You know, you got Final Fantasy. Literally every game. One Piece. All of it. <laughs> Politically pushed. Okay. They're pushing the agendas. They're trying to let you guys know what they think about the world and the politics in it, who they think is corrupt and how you should fight it. I assure you that if Dr. Disrespect did get the deal, like, he did get the game early or he was able to work with Starfield, he wouldn't have anything to say. 
at all, completely silent. <laughs> but because he didn't get what he wanted, he you know decided to go ahead and pick you know make a jab at the fact that the guy has a he him pronoun. That's specifically what's happening here. He did not get what he wants, so now he wants to create a bit of a tension battle based on the fact that the guy has the pronouns. There's there's no way else to spin it. He's just big baby rage mad because he didn't get his way. That's my opinion. To be completely frank, when I kind of go around on the internet, sometimes when I see that like the most eccentric people on the internet doing like the absolute most and you know you go to their profile picture sometimes you might see like he him black lives matter blah 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 and you'll see like all of these like freaking words and adjectives and i'm like okay okay this guy is like representing every political sphere in the planet now and i can see why this guy's a little bit out of pocket but just to kind of just point at one jab that someone puts out their own pronouns on there and that's it nah dog that that that's not it, okay? I know what he's referring to. I'm not going to act like that doesn't exist, where there are some people whose entire personalities are based on just literally every political sphere that lasts on the planet, and all they do is exist online to create combat and warfare, right? <laughs> but this was not that situation, in my opinion. You guys can let me know how you guys feel, though. But guys, we need to talk about this. We're going to go into this rabbit hole. Two rabbit holes that we have today. This one having to do with this YouTuber by the name of Vince. We didn't have time to talk about it yesterday's video, because it was going to be a super duper big chunky wongy if I did so and I wanted to give you guys something today. So let's kind of get into it here. Atomic Waffle and a lot of you guys asked me to bring notice of this and said, YouTuber Vince Vantage being stalked into YouTube's awful DMCA system. I knew it, man. I have been saying that YouTube's DMCA system is so terrible but you can get copyright striked and by any random person online anybody anybody just can come here and be like hey copyright striking your content because i think it's my content and then you got to go into a dispute and then once you go into the dispute you got to give up your private freaking information in order to <laughs> resolve it anyway he has a video here and this came out, uh, well, it says if it's 24 hours, he has 700,000 views. Is there really no way that YouTube is ignoring a guy who's being stalked? This, 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 this is, this can't be real. Okay. It says, I need your help. Video is a 20 minute video. It almost has a million views with almost a hundred thousand likes. And, um, yeah, he's, let's see if we can get into the nitty gritty of it. Let me see if I can find out the core ingredient of what is occurring. Cause if I'm not misunderstood, if this is something that I've been talking about for quite a while now, it probably has something to do with the fact that the whole DMCA process of just basically exposes your information to anybody that they want to have it. I never wanted to make this video because I like the upload quality stuff you know or yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of time and effort into it but I'm, I'm literally at the point where i don't know what else to do but make this video for the last month and a half i have had a stalker and this stalker has done everything they can to try to destroy my life and my livelihood which is my youtube channel i've received messages nearly every single hour for the last 35 days from this man and now we're at the point where this man has placed four copyright strikes on my videos to get my channel terminated because YouTube's rules, well, if you get three strikes, your channel's done so. But YouTube has done absolutely nothing to help me out in this situation. Now, this stalker is so vicious that I've had to hire a private investigator, a cyber harassment litigation firm, and a copyright attorney. So who is this stalker and why is he doing this to me, trying to ruin my YouTube channel? Now, I mentioned this stalker in one of my most recent videos about the Xbox Underground hackers. And one of the hackers that was arrested for hacking into the US military and all that, his name is Sinet. And Sinet has been the absolute scum of the earth for the last fucking month and a half. I genuinely fear for my life at this point. I've had to move out of where I live. I've had to change fucking all of my shit because this guy is just seeping into every personal aspect of my life to try to f it up. So just keep this in mind. All right, Jesus. That's absolutely freaking terrifying. God dang. I Jeez. Well, I was right. It's the basically the core of it is the DMCA strikes and how you can just basically pry into people's information as a YouTuber and just just basically just get into there. It, I read here that it says I've lost track of how long people have been complaining about YouTube, their copyright system and the glaring problems with it. The fact that the malicious forces can exploit the system to get your personal l information is a massive security and privacy liability. They should be sued. I've been I've been saying it nonstop 
It happened to me, bro, where I was like, I do not want to, I can't fight these copyright strikes from these people that I don't know without giving all of my freaking private information. I might as well just give them my social security number and everything. Here, here you go. Here's all my private information just because you are falsely copyright striking my channel. This man's getting hit on all fronts. So like, and YouTubers have been complaining about this concept non-stop the only reach around that i can think of when it comes to this is when uh you sign up for youtube that you do it underneath an llc but not every youtuber can afford to sign up for an llc and then also if you do come on youtube as an llc i'm not exactly sure as a regular person i'm not actually sure if you're able to like revert it back to like a, a company or a business i'm not sure if you can actually change ownership of the google accounts i know it's some weirdness happening there so the, the end all be all of it is just the system does not make it safe for the people who are, it needs to be harsher penalties towards the people who are doing false copyright claims because they have no skin in the game at all they can come in and just screw around with you take your information be wrong and then he he ha ha get out of there there's literally nothing <laughs> bad that can occur to these other groups of people. Here's a good one. YouTube really needs to make it that the DMCA filer has to provide legal proof that the content they are striking is theirs. How can someone claim a news clip is theirs? They should also have to provide identification slash address so they can face the consequences for abusing DMCA. That's, I agree. You're going to come at somebody and, and try to ruin their life and put your skin in the game that it needs to be the other way around. OK, both people need to be at risk here. If you're going to come at somebody's wallet, you better be exposing yourself. If you're going to come at somebody's identity. Your identity needs to be known as well. There's not much else to it. I've been complaining about this problem and YouTubers have been going about this for for so long now. And it, I don't want YouTube to wait until somebody gets freaking hurt until this actually becomes fixed okay i don't know how much more that us commentators and news channels need to scream into the abyss to say youtube this is a faulty program please fix it to protect your creators okay <laughs> we keep telling you that this is a huge risk for the creators and the people who create videos on your platform please do something about it because it is constantly being abused by not good people. I don't know also to make it more clear. I don't know who we need to yell at or what needs to be done to have YouTube to respond to it. But I'll let you guys know if there's any updates when it comes to Vince in this entire situation. He has to put all this time and resources to protect himself because the platform that he makes content on has no intent on protecting him. Okay, so guys, I think this is going to be a bit of a big chungy wungy deep dive into a YouTuber by the name of Ruby Frankie, a popular family vlogger who got arrested for suspicion of child abuse. And there is an article by NPR. So good Lord, this may, if you're on NPR, PR, that means you, this ain't just like, you know, <laughs> this ain't just drama alert, the commentary space. You are national news. Who is Ruby Frankie and what exactly occurred? I, I think I've heard things. I know that people kind of talked about in videos and maybe you watching it might have caught something as well. I'm going to look for the TLDR and also some of just all the specs to kind of summarize and find out who she is, what occurred and uh, what's happening now. This article by NPR said, what to know about the mommy vlogger who's accused of abuse. Ruby Frankie is a Utah YouTube star who has spent the last eight years dishing out parenting advice to millions of followers and was arrested Wednesday alongside her business partner, Jody Hildebrandt on suspicion of aggravated child abuse. Police said Frankie's malnourished son escaped out a window with his arms and legs covered in duct tape fleeing to a neighbor's house seeking food and water. For some of Frank's viewers, this news was no surprise. Her videos have long sparked criticism, controversy, and claims that child abuse was unfolding unabated for digital viewers to enjoy. Here's a rundown of the situation. Oh, people, people had suspicions that she was doing stuff like this in her own videos. It was kind of like hinted, like, huh? Who is Ruby Frankie? She is a 41 year old Mormon mother of six from Ivan's, Utah. Uh... Though active across several social media platforms, she's best known for her once popular YouTube channel, Eight Passengers. In over 1,000 videos since the channel's launch in 2015, Frankie documents the sometimes intimate, sometimes mundane daily details of family life, gaining nearly 2.3 million subscribers in the process. Some of the most watched videos show her children in the most vulnerable moments of suburban adolescence, quote, learning to shave, trying on new clothes, and facing reprimand. Frank Arms' outstressed selfie style toggles between speaking to the 
children directly and making eye contact with the camera, narrating her rationale for parenting decisions as they unfold in real time. Some of her lessons contain spiritual undertone or light references to traditional values. Ugh. Okay. All right. Yeah. Take, take, that's that's those are the warning signs. I can I can already I can already tell like this is a very scary situation when your parent is is monetizing her parenting over you. <laughs> um, yeah, this is kind of creepy. Eight Passengers was removed from YouTube earlier this year. NPR couldn't find a publicly stated explanation for the move, but the takedown coincided with the noticeable uptick in criticism. So why was it so controversial? We're having to sit down. We're having to read down. We're just reading this article by NPR, guys. I'm just this is, seems to be a good summary. So yeah, if you don't have the summary, Let's just, you know, go along. Hopefully I'm, I'm narrating it properly for you guys. Even before the news of Frank's arrest, a string of exposed style videos and blog posts from other creators catalog moments after the moment perceived toxic behavior. I believe our girl Spanky, the, uh, the girl we talked about who basically did that three-part documentary on, um, what's her name? Ballinger? Uh, Colleen Ballinger. Yeah. And then the entire situation surrounding there. I believe Spanky made a video about this five months ago. So she's kind of already ahead of the, 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 the curve there. Some of the criticism takes aim at the style of the content altogether saying Frankie is one of hundreds of content creators who force children too young to consent to trade their privacy for her financial gain. That's a common refrain in today's influencer discourse. Earlier this month, Illinois became the first state to introduce a law mandating that child influencers receive financial compensation for appearing and video content, but other concerns over eight passengers focused specifically on Frankie and her strict parenting techniques claims she openly abused her children in front of millions of eager viewers. Huh? What was she doing? What was she? How? What was she doing? In one video posted in June 2020, Frank's then 15 year old son said he'd slept on a beanbag chair for seven months after being banned from his shared bedroom for pranking his younger brother into believing he was being taken to Disneyland. In an interview with The Insider, Frankie defended the decision to revoke her son's bedroom privileges, but added that the beanbag comment had been taken out of context. The teen had been given a choice of sleeping on a blow up or a pull out mattress, but declined. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, okay? I, I, I come from a, a family where I ain't gonna expose my own family, all right? <laughs> but I, I have, I've gone through stuff. I, I recognize things here that I could familiar from my own upbringing. Specifically, this one kind of reminds me of the whole removing the door from your kid's um, room whenever something happened. Some parents will punish you by literally taking the hinges off the door so that you now have no privacy in your own room to establish that this is my house and you need to live by my rules or you get no privacy to yourself kind of thing. Like I, I, I've, that's happened to me and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys watching this video right now are very familiar with that concept if it hasn't already happened to you. And another video, Frankie says she refused to bring food to her then six year old after the child had forgotten her lunch at home. She defended that move too, saying it was necessary to teach her daughter personal responsibility and that she was fed immediately upon returning. So your response to punish a six-year-old is to starve her. That's insane. Several other videos also show Frankie threatening to take away meals as punishment. Bro, there are also videos of Frankie threatening to cut the head off her child's teddy bear. Huh? Taking away the children's Christmas presents and sending her oldest boy to a behavioral camp where you've spent a minimum of 49 days in the wilderness with little gear. What? So jail? Children jail? This is... Holy, she is a terrible person, bro. What in the world? Who is Jody Hildenbrand and what is Connie Zions? And around the same time Frankie stopped posting a passenger, she started appearing in another video series called Connie Zions Classroom. Connie Zion builds itself as a mental health curriculum and counseling service structured around the principles of, quote, impeccable honesty, rigorous personnel, pers responsibility, and vulnerable humility. The founder of the company, Jody Hildebrandt, is a therapist who had her license suspended in 2012 after she's disclosed a patient's uh, porn addiction to his Mormon church leaders. So this, 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 this obviously, and I'm sorry if any of you guys are watching this video or Mormon anything, but it, it reeks of, of, of religion, you know, and <laughs> when it comes to religious folks, my family's religious as well. It can be a bit kind of out of pocket when it comes to their policies of parenting and just, you know, living in general. No disrespect to the religious folks at home. I, I was in that same upbringing, but if you know, you know. Frank and Hildebrand appear together regularly in videos and podcasts, including as recently as Monday. The two share values-based lessons on topics like blame, control and denial with notes on family life infused around, and Connie Zahn's young page was removed on Friday following the news of the women's arrest. So both of them got arrested, not just uh, Frankie. It is unclear if the video had been removed by the company or by YouTube itself. So why? 
where Frank and Hildebrand arrested. Around 10.50 a.m. on Wednesday, this was last week, Frank's 12-year-old son climbed out the window. We talked about this, all right? He ran to the neighbor's hood. The responding officer said that the child appeared severely malnourished and has sustained deep lacerations from being tied up with a rope. Oh, my God. Okay, I didn't know it was going to get ashed. I probably should have gave you all a, 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 a trigger warning on this, but... It's here. I'll, I'll try to put it like in a note so that you guys can see it prior. The boy was transported to a local hospital while police searched Hildebrandt's home. They there discovered another child, Frank's 10-year-old daughter, who appeared to be malnourished. She was also taken to the hospital. In total, four of Frank's children were removed into the care of department. She had four kids. According to a press release, Frank and Hildebrandt were arrested on suspicion of two felony counts, each of aggravated child abuse. Through charges have not yet been filed through the local court system. Frank declined to speak with officers and requested an attorney, the affidavit said. The name of the attorney's by the woman had not been publicly listed. A lawyer reportedly representing Frank's husband did not respond to an NPR voicemail seeking comment by the time of publication. A call to the number listed to Connie Zanz went unreturned and a judge granted a detective's request that Frank be held without out bail both women were still in custody as of friday morning i whatever the result is i hope and pray that the child services keeps this woman away from those kids because that's absolutely terrifying finally to end it it says what is her family saying uh, sherry frank the family's eldest daughter at age 20 has not replied to npr's request for comment but has been posting about her mother's arrest on instagram stories on wednesday night she shared a photo of officers at her childhood home and the caption Finally, oh my God, according to several news outlets that caught the initial story, which disappears by design after 24 hours. Sherry later shared that she and her family were so glad justice is being served and had been trying to tell the police and CPS for years about this. She also called for help collecting links to questionable or concerning videos featuring her mother and shared a link to a Google Doc filled with public contributions. Ruby Frank's three sisters, who are also family influencers, said in a joint post that the arrest needed to happen. So her own family says she has got to go that she is a menace and she's mistreating their kids and she apparently they've been trying to stop her unsuccessfully but now she is officially being charged and held responsible for the last three years we have kept quiet on the subject of our sister ruby frank for the sake of her children uh, behind the public scene we have done everything we could to try to make sure the kids were safe they wrote and in saying the kids are now safe which is the number one priority good Lord, what a freaking story, dude. Oh my God. Like that's terrifying that people for years, this woman, Ruby Frank was making content on YouTube where she was also simultaneously abusing these kids as well. Unfortunately, it's not very surprising in these kind of like times. Like I feel like in definitely past times, like you, you'll see here all these stories about like childhood actors and celebrities who have been abused by their parents, like because their parents were basically using them as bank accounts and, and sponges and they grow up all messed up and twisted because their parents never really loved them. They was just trying to make money off of them. And this is the same thing that's happening in this day and age, except for it comes to YouTube and, and TikTok and vlogging channels and family channels. And now we start monetizing how you treat your kids. And, and there are some wholesome ones, you know, like the kids are fine and there's no abuse happening, but then it appears to be the ones where someone's mentally unstable and is, um not doing good by their by their by their own blood yeah guys that's the ruby frank situation in a nutshell i'll let you guys know if there's any follow-ups in terms of like her arrest or the or if there's going to be any trials or what's going to happen with the, i'll keep you guys posted on this because this is something i need to know that the kids are going to be safe and this woman is going to be put behind bars and and stayed away because this is absolutely terrifying to hear i'm glad that the, the kids are out but man this is going to require years and years of of of, of therapy i mean this, there's there's no rewinding the kind of abuse that they probably had to serve and i feel so you know terrifyingly sorry that that's something that they had to go and undergo through with but also relieved that it finally has come to a halt and come to an end but all right guys that's all i have for today's video if you made it in drop a like subscribe if you guys haven't already i'll get out of your hair I'll probably make a video for you guys tomorrow on wednesday if not wednesday then thursday depending on the news i love you guys i'll catch you guys later take it easy stay safe on them streets man and and uh yeah i love y'all that's it <laughs> all right man take it easy peace